Starting in two, one. Okay, so uh, here with Greg McHelleran from Rhizome Beverages. G'day, Greg, how are you going? Nigel, I'm very good, thanks. Thanks for have, having me on again. Great My pleasure. Here. My pleasure. Um, so today we're going to uh, talk about um, a, a style which you're quite familiar with and some of our uh, members might be familiar with too. It's it's the Irish Stout. Um, and uh, you uh, are the importer for um, O'Hara's Irish Stout, which is this baby here. It comes in, uh, in a bottle and now in the can in the nitro. Tell us a little bit about this. Yeah, well, uh, O'Hara's, I suppose, that, you know, the first thing, Ireland, when people think about Ireland, there's probably a few things that come to mind. And normally at the top is going to be beer or whiskey or both. And uh, so I suppose even in terms of, of beer, um, people are probably going to think about Guinness, pints of the black stuff, and uh, which is good, kind of uh, ubiquitous across the country. And it's it's actually an amazing drop. Um I suppose what we find over the last couple of decades, that as you know, as a brand, Guinness is constantly trying to appeal to a broader audience, a more of a mass appeal, and a lot of people have kind of thought that um, you know the, the flavour has kind of diminished somewhat, has become a little bit kind of less um, kind of bold uh, compared to how it used to be brewed, and and that's fair enough. It's, it's a large kind of a multinational brand, and it kind of left room then for other brands to go back and revisit how Irish stouts were traditionally made and, and what you should really expect from an Irish stout according to the old kind of proper recipes. And one of the breweries that really have, have pioneered this is um, O'Hara's. And uh, it's a brand that is produced by Carlo Brewing Company and, and Carlo Brewing. They're, uh, they've been on the go since 1996 in Ireland. And um, they're currently Ireland's kind of largest craft brewery. Um, just that they've they, they've been out so long. We got in before a lot of other people, and um, they've done a lot of work in the domestic market and in export. And it's basically fifty percent of what they produce is consumed in Ireland, which is very important. And then the other fifty percent is exported around the world. And we are particularly proud to be representing. Or Paris here in Australia, and um, yeah, to just trying to bring some of the, the really good beers from Ireland uh, over to the Australian market. Nice. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, we did one on the Irish Red Ale, um, which was uh, O'Hara's, of course, as well. Um, and as I said, the, they did come in bottles, but now you've got them in the the tall cans for the, um, which is nitro as well. Um, so. Um, yeah, again, with, you know, the one that people are familiar with, I'll just go back over some of the history here. So, um, you know, Guinness started brewing back in 1759, uh, which is, you know, that's going back a, a couple of decades now. Um, but they weren't the only ones, as you said, that, that brewed that style of beer. Um, and in 1799, so as you probably heard this story a, a few times, but for people that haven't in regards to porter versus stout, so... Um, really, that there's a saying that uh, every, um, not every stout, sorry, not every porter is a stout, but um, every stout is a porter. So what they were saying with that was basically the beer, the style was a porter, um, and then they brought out this stouter kind of porter, which was basically a higher alcohol content porter. So porters sort of became stout porters. So, you know, it's regular porter, stout porter. And then eventually they dropped the the um, the porter bit off the end and it became sort of porters or stouts. But, I mean, the one thing which is um, interesting with the Irish stout compared to, say, an American stout or a, even an English stout, a um, couple of things which sort of set it apart is, one, the alcohol content. So they tend to be a little bit lower in alcohol content. The ABV range is from 4 to 4.5%. Um, uh, American and English both higher than that. Um, they're, they're also quite dry in their finish, and that's one of the things which has become, um, I guess, a bit of a, uh, like a benchmark for both the Irish Stout, the Irish Red, is that dryness that comes from... Um, and my understanding is so they, you know, everybody uses barley for to, within the malting process, but they use um, a number of them use like a um, 
a de-husked version so it sort of gives a like a little bit gives you that little drier flavor as opposed to the the roasted malts um and that's the way that they they sort of differentiate themselves with the irish stout especially american stouts like everything american bigger bolder brasher more hop driven um but even from the english stout the irish stouts are a, a drier uh, you know and a lower alcohol content version Absolutely, and I think even with, with with porter, obviously there's there's a reference back to you know in London it became uh, really really popular with porters in and around Covent Garden, and I think that also kind of led to the, the name being adopted by um, you know for, for porter. So yeah, it, it's a little bit confusing with you know the stout versus porter, but definitely kind of very uh, their, their, I think their history is kind of uh, very much interlinked and. Um, but I think even yeah, Irish stouts tended to be much more drier than the sweet or the milk stouts that were uh, available in, in the UK and elsewhere. And yeah, it's just become such a staple. And you know what's really interesting, what I love about when I'm back in Ireland, you could always tell the people who are drinking stout, whether in a bar or a nightclub, because they're always kind of looking over the bar to see how their pint is being poured. Yeah, and to see if it's uh, if it's you know up, up to scratch, and it's great because it's the only beer in Ireland where people you know if it's not served properly, they they'll send it back or they or they'll they'll, they'll complain about it. Yeah, every other beer that is handed over the counter, the head could be falling off it or falling down the side, and people don't mind so much. But uh, when it comes to drinking stout, people are very particular about it. So it's almost like Melburnians with their coffee; <laughs> they want it uh, exactly how they want it, and. Uh, and I think that it's just great because, you know, people need to be, uh, you know, the, the bar staff that are pouring this, they've got to put responsibility really to, you know, to, to do it uh, to the best of their ability. And, yep. um, and, uh, so, and there is a bit of a knack uh, to pouring a proper pint. I wouldn't say I'm, I'm not good at it myself compared to people who are, uh, who have been doing it for, for a living. But uh, whenever I'm back in Ireland, there's certain pubs that I go to in Dublin just simply because um, I know that, I'll never get a pint like it served anywhere else in the world. Yeah. And uh, these are guys that have been, you know, they've made a career, you know, from, from bartending and uh, serving really, really good pints. So, uh, and it's interesting, there's, there's a couple of Instagram pages, I don't know if you've come across, but um, um, Shit London Guinness, for example, is one of them. <laughs> and uh, this guy just went around taking photographs in pubs of what was being passed off as a pint of Guinness. Right. <laughs> It's really, really taken off. So <laughs> you get a bit of a laugh if you if you check that out on Instagram because uh, they, they've got like you know hundreds of thousands of followers now. So people people do take it uh, quite seriously, and uh, that's that's great to see. Yeah. Well, talk, talking about uh, pouring and and temperatures and all that sort of stuff. So um, yeah, we, I've got it coming up on my screen here. We've got so uh, the type of glass that it's best served in or recommended is. Uh, a tulip or a pint glass um, and uh, I know you've got it probably got the O'Hara's official one there but I've just grabbed my uh, my pint glass my trusty pint glass um, and the recommended serving temperature uh, for this is about 7 to 10 degrees so generally uh, that means pulling the beer out of the fridge probably a few maybe five ten minutes before you're ready to drink it um, and then um, you know obviously the beer will warm as it's at, at, in the glass as well but um, because this is, um, of course, the nitro version, so uh, it's got the widget in there, so there's nothing special we have to do. We just open the can, we pour that, and uh, so I'm going to pour mine now, and uh, you can do Whoa, makes some noise, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I have to say, like, with uh, some of the nitro beers that you know especially the ones that don't have the widget in them uh you know we have to shake the can and all that sort of stuff um i've found that get uh varying range of success with those um but there it is it's in the glass you can see in mine it's already started to to come up the black at the bottom nice big creamy texture and um, starting to work its way up <coughs> Yeah. And, um, yeah, definitely re recommended to take it out of the fridge, as you say, a couple of minutes beforehand because uh, the beers are supposed to be served cold, but but not not too cold because it um, just locks out all, all of the flavour. And 
I think what I find people are most impressed about when they do try O'Hara's is that for 4.3% ABV, they're, they're really taken aback by how much flavor um, they're able to pack in at that level of alcohol. So um, people find that quite surprising. I'll just maybe pop this out as well. Like that's obviously the um, the stubby bottle there as well that people might see out and about in the, in, in the trade. Yep. But that's been the original um, O'Hara stout that we've been bringing in for these last couple of years. Yep. Um, obviously, it's not nitrogenated. Um, and quite a different experience from the nitro, but um, look, it's, it's just been fantastic that O'Hara's have, they, they've, they've put in a canning plant about a year ago, and uh, I'm absolutely delighted now that they've got nitro start and nitro red ale. It's been a bit of a, a game changer yeah. uh, for us. And uh, yeah, let's launch it. Cheers. Um, love you. So love you, we'll, love we'll look into a little bit of the style here, and I'm reading through some of the notes of on the website, which I, which I downloaded, but... Um, so uh, they use five uh, malts and, and wheat varieties for a traditional dry, dry stout. Um, normally is served in draft, um, but of course this one has been nitrogenated um, in the can. Uh, a deep color with a reddish hue when held to the light and it pours a thick creamy head, which you can see on there. Uh, interestingly, um, uh guinness when they talk about their beer they say it's not a black beer they say it's a dark ruby so same thing here it's uh it's pretty hard you have to get you know probably a, a good sunlight behind it uh to be able to see the color but you can see it is definitely it's not it's a reddish black black yeah it's got that sort of reddish look to it as well um on the nose uh coffee and it says light licorice i also pick up a, like a little bit of chocolate as well um and uh talks about the aftertaste about espresso flavors so you know that sort of little coffee flavor as well um so yeah i had a good sniff of that smells delicious i'm gonna have a taste <clears throat> yeah, i get a lot of chocolate straight up that's sort of a predominant thing obviously that uh, that creamy head gives you that nice creamy mouthfeel as well. So, um, yeah. Very satisfying. It is, it is. And, um, <clears throat> you know, as you said, for a beer that's only like four and a half percent or four point, you know, three percent, it's it's got a lot of flavor. Mm. Well, that's, as I said, it, it's what O'Hara's have kind of um, really specialized in is going back. And I suppose the, the, the two main the styles that they produce are stout and Irish red ale, and uh, they do a number of stouts. And um, but this is the kind of flagship now. And uh, yeah, it's just there's, there's the, the length of flavour on that as well is, is fantastic. It's just uh, there's obviously got the little bit of sweetness up front, that kind of dark chocolate. There's a maybe a little bit of a espresso there as well, but then quite quickly it, there's the dry finish comes across. And um, they're using quite generous amounts of bubbles, hops in there as well. So there's a little bit of tartness coming through towards the mid and the end of that. And then um, certainly very, lovely dryness. And then, um, so again, like what, one of the big kind of, I think one of the, you know, the most famous food pairings is like oysters and stout. And uh, like O'Hara's works particularly well um, in that regard. So it's, um, if anyone out there is um, a lover of oysters, they should definitely try some with uh, with an O'Hara's. Well, I, I live in the south coast of New South Wales and this part of the south coast is uh, referred to as the oyster uh, coast. Um, we've got some of the best oysters in the country um, and uh, Tathra oysters, which is just like 10 minutes up the road from here, have been um, winners of the best oyster in Australia at the Royal Easter Show for about the last, I don't know, eight or 10 years or something. So um, their oysters have actually been featured in um, in New York restaurants. So this area here, I mean, Marimbula even itself has got, uh, um, you know, we've got oyster leases all over the place. So yeah, oysters and stout, definitely a good pairing. Um, and we've got some of the best oysters in the country. Look, I need to look into that. Do you, do you ever have oyster festivals as such? Is there such a thing here? Yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah. Naruma, which is about an hour's drive from here, has an oyster festival. Um, but um, yeah, we've got uh, 
you know, we've got, like I said, we've got some of the best oysters in the country coming right out of here. Brilliant. Look, I need to uh, to look into that and see if there's any opportunities to do a wee bit of uh, kind of cross promotion or uh, some kind of a sampling event, you know? Yeah, well, I mean, um, so uh, a couple of, the, we've got a number of really good seafood restaurants around here as well. And um, I've done uh, food pairings where we've done like a degustation with a, you know, like a four or five course meal with different beers and um, matching food. And often we do a, um, you know, we we will do with a stout. We can do, obviously, you can do that sort of um, where you complement or contrast. And the thing about the the uh, oysters and the stouts is that's a contrast because one's really salty and clean and fresh and the other one's really chocolatey and, and sort of... Right. Yeah, and so they sort of they contrast, but they go really well together. Um, but uh, yeah, just as well, uh, you know, you can imagine drinking this with uh, a nice sort of uh, rich or eating, having a rich pudding for dessert or something like that. You know, like a chocolate pudding or a sticky date pudding or something, and 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 washing it down with one of these as well. Yeah, well, like some people say that, like a, you know, a pint of stout is almost like a meal in itself. And then, um, look, I know before kind of health and safety legislation kind of took over, you know, back in the day, um, pregnant women were advised to have a bottle of stout yeah. every day. It was really good for iron levels and stuff. And obviously, you can't make any claims these days about the health benefits of beer, and that's that's fair enough. But, um, yeah, there's just a lot of nutritional information or, you know, sustenance um, in these kind of beers as well. And I suppose that beer typically is seen by the germans as being liquid bread yeah and um you know so that's kind of where it originated in, in, there, in that regard and um, so yeah that there's a lot of kind of uh, uh interesting kind of properties to stout as well so yeah people used to say like you know having a pint of stout is almost like like having a meal because it's it's quite viscous it's quite quite thick and um, yeah you know, yeah, and uh, on the on the website, uh, the Ahara's website, it said food pairings recommended excellent with seafood, particularly shellfish and smoked salmon. Also pairs well with strong flavoured cheeses, dried cure meats such as Parma ham. But yeah, like I said, I mean um, we had uh, we had degustation recently, and we had like a a, a banoffee like a, um, for a, a dessert, and we paired it with an espresso porter, which is not dissimilar to this. Yeah, um, yeah. And you know the the matching flavors there were just sensational. Um, and you know, I mean, I think one of the things that um, we got to think about in Australia is because our one our culture and two our um, our sort of temperature and our you know the geographical aspect of of um, you know where we are and the heat and stuff like that. It's quite different than Europe. I mean, Australia's a base, Australians basically grow up growing up. In a, in a warm climate where uh, beer is d designed for refreshment um, and to, you know, sort of um, qu thirst quenching. So, you know, that old lawnmower beer and the lagers and stuff like that. Very easy drinking, yeah. low alcohol content, light, clean and refreshing, um, which is great. But there's that whole other side of beer, like, you know, again, with stouts, whether they're Irish or whatever, they're, they're not designed to come, you know, it's not the sort of beer that you drink on a 40 degree day sitting at the beach and drinking it out of a can. It's a beer that, you know, classic, you know, this time of year when the uh, it's a little bit cooler weather or the temperature is a little bit cooler where you can drink something that's going to give you sort of a more intense flavour. It's not designed for refreshment. It's designed for, to be sort of like you said, like that meal in the can. Uh, it goes great with food. Um, but the good thing about this is not too high alcohol content. So you can just, you can have a few of them without, you know, getting over the top. And that, that's really important um, because like the whole pub culture in Ireland um, is still kind of going strong. And I suppose the pubs there are quite different to the pubs uh, in Australia, a lot of them. When I first came to Australia, it's only the pub seemed to be more like a, a watering hole kind of thing. It's more about refreshment and just kind of, you know, respite from from the uh, the hot weather, whereas a lot of the the pubs around Ireland, um, you know, especially the older ones, they're they're kind of cosy, and it's uh, they're quite dark inside, and uh, so you know, even there's there's a saying, you know, if it's if the weather's cold or it's raining, people say it's a day for the high stool, which means that you're going to go in and, and take a few 
in the in the local pub and uh, sipping a couple of pints during the day. And I suppose the other thing is that in Ireland people never just go for one. So um, if you're going to go and have have you know a couple of beers, you want to be able to sit there, have the crack, and uh, if you're drinking eight percent, nine percent brews, you know it's um, it's going to get messy pretty quickly. Yeah. And uh, in that regard, so yeah, look, Irish dry stout is it's, and, and the same with the reds. It's just perfect, like at that kind of level of alcohol, you can have a couple of beers, really really satisfying, long lasting. Like even now, you know, we're a couple of minutes in, and, and the head is still kind of sitting quite firmly on that as well. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, you can just savor it and just work your way through it. And uh, so it's not something that just needs to be downed as quickly as possible or guzzled. You just really get to enjoy it. And, uh, yeah, so it's it's, um, it's great that way. Yeah, for sure. And so um, while we're at it, so um, we've talked about O'Hara's, but um, perhaps just give us a little bit of a, uh, rundown on some of the other beers that you bring to in too. So the Rye River stuff, which in our last session with the Irish Red, we cracked that brown ale, which was sensational. Um, Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, tell us a little bit about Rye River. So we've got, got a few others in. Uh, well, one thing I will mention now, just before we jump on to Rye River, um, I have two other things that uh, I wanted just, just to mention. I, I've got at the moment on our website, I don't have a bottle with me here, but we've brought in some of... Um, O'Hara's have, for the last 10 years, they've been doing a small batch uh, barrel-aged release. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's called the uh, Leon Follon barrel-aged series. It's a strictly limited series. And the last batch that we brought in, uh, it's been it's a stout that's been aged for six months in ex-Irish uh, whiskey barrels for six months, and then a further six months in the uh, ex sherry oloroso kegs that have been part of a solera uh, method and the in Jerez in spain and it's absolutely incredible just the the comp- you know the how complex a beer and just the the flavors and notes that are coming from both sets of barrels it's quite extraordinary so I, i'd recommend for anybody that that is interested in their barrel aged beers and uh, jump onto our website artisanireland.com.au and you'll see that we've got um, we've got some of the uh, Leon Follon barrel aged series there and uh, they, they come in a three pack it's a 375 mil bottle uh, 12% ABV and we're just selling them at, at three bottles in, in one pack yeah. to kind of make it a, a little bit affordable and then next year I'll be bringing in I don't think you've seen this yet Nigel this is another new can from O'Hara so this is their a uh, traditional Leon Follon. It's not barrel aged, so it's an extra stout uh, that we were bringing in. And uh, again, it's kind of uh, it's up there at six percent alcohol, so a lot more uh, chocolate, uh, vanilla, and uh, mild mocha. But this is yeah, nice. again, yeah, it's it's another really kind of stunning uh, stout from the O'Hara stable. So I'll be looking forward to bringing some of that in again for for next winter. Yeah, all right. Um, well, we'll have to come back to that one next year because, um, yeah, yeah, there's not too many of that style of beer around. Yeah, and that, that's what I'm really trying to do is to, is to uh, just find a little bit of a niche here just to get some of the stuff. I know there's there's uh, a few breweries now doing Celtic Reds and, and doing, you know, Nitro Stouts and one thing or another. And, um, you know, I, I still think that, like, Ireland has a bit of a, a natural kind of a uh, – kind of advantage when it comes to brewing these styles of beers and uh, I'm sure Australia would, would be streets ahead of a lot of other countries in terms of you know some of the eels and stuff that they do and pale eels and stuff but stouts and reds are something that we kind of specialize in historically yeah. so uh, I'm looking at trying to bring uh, some really interesting examples of those to uh, to market and um, speaking of which now so we've got um Rye River Brewing Company. It's another one of the brands that I'm importing from Ireland at the moment. And uh, um, this is a really stunning uh, kind of brown ale that they've, they've produced. It's a collaboration with uh, Crisp Maltings in the UK. And um, so they've got, uh, they've developed a thing called the RevTech uh, machine, which allows them to just get really pinpoint what way they want the, the, the barley and the malt to um, to turn out so they can really dial it for each specific type of beer that they're producing and um, I posted a little video on the Beer Education Facebook page earlier in the week and uh, if anyone's interested in a, a, you know a, a brown ale and the story behind this 
definitely worth uh, checking out that little uh, video on uh, on the Facebook page. Yeah, and uh, we, we, we tasted that one last time when we were doing the Irish Red Ale. That was sensational. Real, really, yeah. you know, high quality beer. Um, very nice. And uh, the other one that I mentioned that because um, I brought this in as well. This is interesting because I got McGargles, and this is a, a, a range of beers that are produced by Rye River Brewing Co. And I've been bringing these in for Aldi uh, as well for the last couple of years. And I know a few people on the um, beer education page have come across these. Like it's just incredible value with Aldi. Um, you know, they obviously don't um, try and extract. The same kind of margins as other retailers and to that effect this has got to be the best value um kind of craft beer offering uh, in australia we normally do it around st patrick's day and uh, what rye river have done under the mcgargill's brand they've got four different beers yeah um in a little selection pack so this is their um their gym stout they've also then got um, a lager um Another cracking uh, red eel as well, and um, then we've got uh, their pale eel offering also. Nice. So it's a great snapshot into what these guys are doing. And the really interesting thing about Rye River Brewing, most people <clears throat> over here have probably never heard of them, but they are in fact uh, the world's most decorated craft brewery uh, at the World Beer Awards in 2020 and 2021. They, they won over 30 awards um, in each year, which is like by far and away uh, the most awards given to any one brewery. So uh, really worth checking out what these guys are up to. And all of their beers are unpasteurized and they're produced in batches of, of two and a half thousand liters maximum. So that's it. So they're, they're really, um, you know, produced to exacting standards. And uh, yeah, so this is the range that we've had available with Aldi. We've got a couple of extra cases that we brought in and uh, they're available on the website at the moment as well, artisanireland.com.au. So um, worth checking out um, <coughs> what we have there as well. And just on that, so you put together a couple of packs which we I've posted up bef before. So there's uh, um, links on, on in the website that go to it, but there's a, uh, there's, I think uh, we got two packs and they include, like it makes up a case, but there's, uh, you know, there's some of the O'Hara stuff, there's some of the Rye River stuff. Um, I don't know whether the McGargle stuff was in there or not, but there's a couple of mixes in there. So if people want to yeah. be able to try a bit of a mix, that's something that you put together for uh, the education members. Absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, there's not many of those left at the moment. So I'd be well advised to, to jump in because as you remember, Nigel, last week or last time we were on, we tried the the brunch, the Baltic uh, breakfast porter from Rye River. Yeah, and uh, it, it was just pretty sensational. Yeah. And, um, so we we've only got a couple of cans of that left now at the moment. So uh, that'll be going into these packs. So uh, yeah, for anyone that's interested in trying that, because I think we we kind of gave it. Well, I think you gave it ten out of ten. <laughs> yeah. So um, you well, know, so that that's kind of high praise indeed. But I think yeah, definitely justified. It's it, it's just extraordinary. Well, mate, um, thanks again for joining us. It's been it's been really good. Um, thanks for sharing the beers with us. Um, I, I really enjoy you know talking about the different styles of beer. And as I said, you know, I mean, I've been. I think we were saying just before we started, um, some styles of beer are really hard to find here in Australia. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, breweries that brew like an Irish Red or an Irish Stout. Um, you know, uh, these are obviously imported, but you know, I mean. Um, I'm trying to you know, try all these different styles and talk people through the styles. You know, sometimes it's it's really hard to find a particular style of beer. So it's great to have somebody that's bringing those in, um, whether they're at the O'Hara's or the Rye River. Um, but um, yeah, look, thanks for being being part of it. Um, now you've also um, agreed to, or you, you're going to give away a case of beer, um, uh, yeah. and that's one of the mixed cases. Uh, what I'll we'll do is I'll try and get a few more people to um, join in on that because uh, I posted it up before. Um, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is click on the link, go to the website that, um, and put in your email address and you're going to go in the draw. So um, we'll, I'll, I'll just, after I post this up, just a reminder to everybody, uh, put your, your name in the hat for that. And then uh, sometime later on today or this evening, uh, you can draw that and uh, we'll post that up on the Facebook group and let, let everybody know who's won. Fantastic. That, that's 
Great. So thanks again for having me, Nigel. Appreciate the support. And um, yeah, so for anyone that's interested in that, like, keep an eye on our website. We're constantly bringing in small batches from Ireland in addition to our main stay brands like O'Hara. So uh, certainly worth keeping an eye out on, on artisanireland.com.au. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Greg. Thanks for joining us and thanks for sharing the beers with us. Awesome. Thanks, Nigel. Cheers, mate.